Good day and welcome back to Elementary 72 Gaming. Now we're going to be touching one of my favorite ships from the Frigate class. Actually it is my favorite ship from this class. And that is the Stealth Bombers. Now the Stealth Bombers have two very important traits. So all of them are capable of using Covert Ops. So you can make them completely invisible. The second thing which makes them all really really good is the fact that they can use overpowered weapons. Now, you may not think that is a big advantage, but just think about it like this. You can sit invisible in places where people are not going to stress. You can sit in front of an enemy station with a fleet. They'll know that you're eye in the, in the system, but hardly anybody will have their shield hardeners on or any of the other little items twinkling on and off on their ships. Once you hit them and lock them up, it's really a big problem for them. So using these ships are practically for that purpose. Now let me just show you as they go up in specialization. Look at this, now it's gone to a large, right? That means if you catch someone unaware, you're going to have unbelievable firepower. And let's just go even further. This is the highest level that the ship can go to, a Manticore 3. Right now, let's go through the ship traits because this is the one that I'm going to be emphasizing for the entire class. Now, one thing to note about it, all stealth bombers use the torpedoes. It doesn't matter which stealth bomber it is, they're all just an abrupt copy of the same thing done in different ships. They're overpowered weapons with a very small ship. So there are three major advantages to them. You can use them in high level combat. They're going to be highly efficient for you. There is a drawback to them. If you use them in high level combat, small ships are going to be a pain. Now, here are a few things which can be used to improve your odds with these vessels. If you're going to use them in missions, and obviously as you can see, they only use torpedoes, so there's nothing else to do with them that makes them more OP. If you're going to use them in this manner, Taking them in for big missions, you revolve around a big ship and you fight the small ships. Remember, you're on the same speed zone, so you'll be able to do it. This ship is highly efficient. It is one of the only ships from the Frigate class that can go to T10. Now, yes, I know that is a big, bold statement, but its output in terms of fire is so ridiculous that it can wipe out everything that can fire against it. And if you're thinking about it logically, it may be a very long fire process, but the moment you fire with it, you can go invisible. And once you go invisible, you can wait for your, your weapons to all recharge completely. One ship is totally gone, right? So say for example, you're fighting a frigate, you lock on and you fire immediately because you have that very fast timer. And the moment you've already launched, you just go invisible. Once you're invisible again, they can't lock on to you. Your signal radius is very, very small. So let's look at the benefits of the Manticore 3. Now, plus 75% large torpedo thermal damage. So your large torpedoes are going to get a 75% buff on one of the damage types. This is a very big thing for a lot of people in case you didn't know. Kinetic damage gets a 7.5%. Obviously, that's a 37.5% total buff to kinetic damage and plus 10% large torpedo flight velocity. Flight velocity increases the range at which you can fire these um, torpedoes. So you have a massive range at 50% additional range. Minus 4% signature radius per level, that's a 20% reduction in your signature radius. As I said, fire and go invisible, that is the method that suits the ship the best. Overall defense, 3,433, 330 meters per second, 5 AU warp speed, 70 megawatt power grid. Now, this is a bit of a complicated one. Remember, we are not got 99% of your power grid usage from the large torpedoes. You only use 1% of them. And if you're effectively using it in PVE, this ship is a beast and it might be the only ship you can use to now approach the high level missions now there are some drawbacks with the ship in case you wanted to know and that is the cooldown timer on the cloak right your cloak has a cooldown timer 
regardless of what you're going to do it is definitely going to affect you big time so be very careful about that cool down timer and please note where i put fittings on the ship they will make a big difference especially the way it is set up so 70 megawatts is where we're going now this is going to be applied for any ship even the nemesis 3 purifier 3 i'm just going to open this one just to show you as you can see it's exactly the same with those attributes only one difference is its inertial modifier all you've got to do is go through the shops and find one which is a little bit faster right there is it that's what i'm going to tell you look for the fastest one i'm, I'm suspecting this is the fastest the breacher yeah it is go with the breacher breacher in the covert ops is going to be unbelievable go into your missiles now we're not looking for regular missiles we're not looking for torpedoes no here we go we're not using the regulars we're not using missiles torpedoes and this is the beauty that we want now remember it's only one percent of the total usage so eight megawatts per weapon you have four of them on your ship now yes there is a little bit extra being added but it's so small that it's not really going to affect you eight megawatts times four that's 36 you want to add the extra we can make it uh 40 right so four, no actually no that, that's not 36 it's 32 we can make it 36 if you want to count it as nine which is the extra by one on them each if we want to over round up which isn't even the correct way to do it so that is what it's going to cost you 36 megawatts out of this entire ship remember everything else is going to be my basic fittings so 36 out of 70 plus there is the addition of your research which will take it up over 100 right so you have more than 100 megawatts let's say that you do the 36 you're back to 70 for the rest of the ship mid slots what are we going to do now there are two things which you can do with the ship especially when it comes to pve number one you can use it with its oh wait sorry i'm passing it straight away with its best suited attribute in terms of electronic warfare and go straight with the predator because remember when you jump out you're going to catch anybody off guard one megawatt go with the scrambler same way that i would always go and you're going to lose that big amount yeah come on uh i'm forgetting how many watts this is seven megawatt so seven plus one is eight eight out of the total this is a nice solid chunk of firepower eight megawatts a large weapon now obviously in pvp i learned my lesson against havoc if you go too fast it doesn't take in the mechanics of the weapon the weapon doesn't have the modifier applied that it should gain more velocity from its launch because you're at such a high pace technically speaking if you were faster than the missile was going it should blow up on you immediately but that doesn't happen in the game so we don't really have to worry about it right we are at 8 megawatts and we'll go with the small Nosferatu now a lot of people will actually argue this point why a small Nosferatu well it's quite simple you're so close to the enemy a small Nosferatu is definitely going to give you your little edge you're going to lock on you're going to hold the end right now here's where the problematic part of the ship comes in we only have three fittings and one belongs to the covert ops immediately there's nothing else you're going to use on the ship besides the covert ops right one megawatt uh, cloaking target delay 30 seconds reactivation delay 30 seconds now there's only one problem with this one here that is going to be the reactivation delay 30 seconds cloaking target delay is negated for this particular ship so you have a zero second cloaking target delay you can instantly fire when it comes to reactivation delay that is the problem once you go invisible you have to wait 30 seconds uh when once you become visible you have to wait 30 seconds before you can go invisible again so yeah that is going to really affect you when it comes to it so yeah one megawatt um, i'm not really cared about calculating it the ship is so overpowered that you don't have to worry about anything else at this point now 
here's where the problematic issue comes in. If you are going for a complete surprise assault, then there's no need for you to go beyond where I'm about to go, right? You're going 17 uh, megawatts into auxiliary thrust, not auxiliary thrust, oh, sorry, to afterburners, and now you have your last slot. If you're thinking of going defense, that's because you know you're going to be available for 30 seconds of fire. You don't have an unlimited amount of shield power, but you are so small and you are so fast that you can negate any large scale damage. Medium scale damage is definitely going to affect you, so medium sized ships are going to be a pain. Um, I haven't yet completed my analysis on the weapons to give you that overall feed. I should have actually completed that first. But last but not least, let's go with the best option to keep a small shield booster on you. Now, as I've explained before, the X-Type is way better than most, and it is obviously in a class all to itself, six megawatts, right? With that on, let's actually go back to the weapons and I need to show you something with regards to them. Sorry about that, wrong weapon. All right, this is the thing that you need to know. When you are applying these weapons, remember there's boost to their damage, which is quite crazy. And if you count it all together, it's about a 50% boost to half of the weapons. And I'm actually going to go into it right now. This is actually quite difficult for me to actually explain. So as you can see, they only have a 1,800 meter per second flight velocity. Now, when you increase it by the boost from the ship 50%, it gives them 2,400. Any enemy within that 2,400 bracket will be hit by the torpedoes. Unfortunately, they have a large explosion uh, radius and a very fast velocity of 71 meters per second for the explosion velocity so you will have damage negated by this effect but if you're looking at it it has 85 damage now when you pair this up with the rest of the aspects of the ship one moment and see what the activation time is 14.4 seconds right so it is quite a long period between each shot if you pair this up correctly you're gonna fire twice before you want to go invisible and you can't go invisible when you're locked so you obviously have to fire out the wave destroy your wave and play effectively in that time. Here are the secrets to the weapons. You have four of them. So you are well within the range of the 360 range of firepower. When you add in your boost to half of it, which will be 25% buff, you do have quite a good amount of firepower. You're around 400 DPS from the small version ship. Now, there are some things to note which go on beyond the basics. If you have enough research, these weapon fire times will come down. Your flight velocity is quite fast, so you're definitely going to have a very, very heavy hit. But in consideration of everything, these hits aren't exactly 360 per hit. This is what the DPS is condensed down to over the 14 seconds that it impacts. Now, when it comes to your rigs, this is what makes a big difference. If you amplify the activation time on this weapon, you're definitely doing the right thing. Remember, even a 10% countdown on this here will mean the reduction of seconds. And that is a big reduction for fight time. And if you can put three of them, that is three total seconds knocked off a 14 second activation, that will put you down to just about a 10 second, a medium weapons interface, sorry. So here is the thing that you want to do. You are going to go for your weapon slot as three activation mods. You're not going to try and increase the damage. The damage is crazy on the output. You have enough, enough firepower from your weapons to obliterate any frigates with a single shot, right? A frigate is one shot, one time gone off the field. If you play your invisibility correct and you take out a frigate, go invisible, wait 30 seconds, fire again on the second frigate and take on the cruisers and battle cruisers in the fleet that you're fighting with with enough speed to evade them you're definitely going to win now for your engineering rigs double auxiliary thruster unbelievable amount of speed damage negation to the max then the next thing that you're going to do is remember you have the afterburner to give you that massive speed bonus you can actually knock out your enemy's speed advantages against you hit them with it and hit them as hard as you can 
now the last thing on the ship because of the fact that i'm using a lot of different rigs which have a little bit of a tendency to impact the the ship a lot i would go with the semiconductor control a little bit bigger capacitor never hurts you could obviously go with uh, uh, circuit memory relays uh, which give you a faster uh, recharge rate but here's the whole thing the ship is very small its firepower is crazy for its size if you stop a ship enough as i said reductions come when you face when you're facing off against other weapons but considering how close you're going to be to most targets you're actually going to obliterate them now the weapon range as you can see isn't crazy with this weapon 10.8 kilometers with the research added to it and your flight velocity adding to this entire situation you have a 15 kilometer radius everything that comes in this range is stopped by your predator warp disruptors sorry no not warp disruptors your, your, your predator web of fires so with that there you have a massive advantage they web they hit you can apply a massive amount of damage if they exceed the the, the speed for escape at 450 meters per second when you hit them remember you expand at 71 meters per second for your explosion if you can beat their escape velocity speeds you definitely will impact them enough to make the damage count you can one shot a lot of ships now obviously if you count 85 per second times 14 that tells you how big a single hit is so it's over a thousand plus about a thousand five hundred per hit and with the research it obviously goes up through the roof uh, i believe i was almost doing um, one eight per hit on a stationary target that if you manage to catch them stationary with your first hit quite possible so 1800 a hit and if you amplify that by four that's well over six thousand if you apply it correctly if you web them down enough if you are close enough and if you catch them in the right spot you don't have to worry about them getting away from the explosion because with everything applied if they are running the micro warp drive route they're going to be knocked out by a scrambler if they're running with the afterburner route your web of fire knocks them down by 61 percent reducing them by that much allows you to blast them to kingdom come right and you have a 15 kilometer radius on your travel time your missiles move at 2400 only micro warp drive ships will evade you now your own speed due to everything that's being added if you are going to go with the best it's going to be the breacher breacher is going to take you up to around 450 meters per second on its standard with research error it could be a little bit more it could be closer to 500 um, once you're adding the double auxiliary thrusters to it you're looking at a base speed without your afterburner of somewhere in the range of 800 meters per second once you add in the boost from your um, afterburner you're looking at about 2400 now regular ships cannot reach the speed none of them can they aren't outfitted with rigs like you can be so don't ever stress about them being able to evade you that is all of the advice that i have and remember 1800 is where you are at without anything being added to the firepower when you condense that activation time the dps seems to go up but you're still going to give that three that six thousand plus hit in a single hit and even if they are not at 400 meters per second or uh, able to evade it instantly faster than your 71 meters per second if you hit them fast enough you're going to hit them in a way that's going to knock down some of their ability to escape and that immediate kinetic and explosive damage will apply quite a bit of its damage you might not apply 100 percent but you could apply 25 percent even 25 percent is one full missiles hit 1800 that's a two shot to take out a ship and if you reduce that fire time to uh, 10 seconds you can take out one frigate and then take out the second frigate before you can cloak again and remember if you're playing it correctly and running in the right directions you'll go out of the targeting range destroying a ship warping out warp back in while invisible get back on them at a point zero where they can't really catch you so there is some take into consideration when using the ship i hope that you all do enjoy catch you all in the next one